Welcome everybody. This is the CanMeds Teaching and Assessment Tool Guides, a sneak peek webinar. My name is Anna Oswald. I'm a rheumatologist from the University of Alberta and a clinician educator at the Royal College, and I'm one of the editors on this project. Cynthia Abbott, I'm the manager of the CanMeds unit at the Royal College, and uh, I worked with Anna as an editor on the tools guide. And then me, third, uh, Sue Glover Takahashi. I go by Sue GT. Uh, I work at the University of Toronto in postgrad medicine as the director of education and research, and uh, was uh, delighted to work on this project as a senior editor. Over to you, Anna. Thank you. Next slide, please, Sue. Okay, so just a quick reminder for participants today, um, we welcome you all and I just want to explain to you how to submit your questions. As you can see, your lines are muted and if you have a question, please type it in the question box. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so these are the objectives of our webinar, as you can see. We are hoping to describe our new resource, explain its purpose and anatomy, the content, and then um, highlight some selected tools for you. Next slide, please. So the Royal College has embarked on a multi-year program to plan, develop, and implement competency-based medical education across the lifelong learning continuum. This new system, called Competence by Design, or as we'll refer to CBD, is a transformational change initiative in specialty education focusing on the learning continuum from the start of residency all the way to retirement. CBD is one of the largest transformations in medical education in 100 years, um, and it will shape our policy, our practices, technologies, and behaviors across many stakeholders within the entire Royal College system, both externally and internally. So CANMEDS 2015 is the foundational framework that enables this entire CBD initiative. For CBD, the Royal College is committed to enhancing knowledge, building skills for physicians, as well as those responsible for training our next generation of physicians, which includes individual and faculty-wide capacity building for those serving within academic centres and community settings. The CANMEDS 2015 Tool Guide is the Royal College delivering on this commitment, and it will be released in its final version um, with the CANMEDS framework. Next slide, please. So over the next decade, each specialty will move to Competence by Design, or CBD, with the support of the Royal College and their specialty committee. In the meantime, all programs will implement CAMEDS 2015 as part of a first step towards CBD. This tool guide highlights several of the key concepts of competency-based education. For example, um, that learner competence will progress over time, the role in helping uh, learners progress along the continuum, the importance of using assessment as a strategy to support and inform further learning, and the importance of teaching and assessing in the workplace. Next slide, please. So I want to emphasize that we hope this will be seen as integration in your teaching and assessment practices rather than an addition of CANMED's teaching to what you do already. Of course, you're going to need to dedicate some time to the foundational concepts and skills for the CANMED's roles, maybe by way of academic half day or other teaching strategies. However, as learners become more accomplished in and comfortable with the various CANMEDS roles, you can begin to leverage experiences in everyday practice to teach and assess several roles and competencies at once. A work-based approach is an efficient way to incorporate CANMEDS into your teaching and assessment activities and does not usually require a lot of extra time. You're providing care anyway. The key difference is that you're using it now as an opportunity to teach and assess your learner's competence. Next slide, please. Since CANMEDS was first created in the 90s, we have received thousands of requests for practical resources that could help busy educators incorporate this teaching of the framework into their regular activities. The CANMEDS tool guide is our answer to these requests, and we hope that it signals our continued commitment to supporting ongoing innovation across the continuum of medical education. Next slide, please. So as a 
have written on this slide, this is a standalone practical introductory teaching assessment resource for competency-based education. It was developed with over 50 contributors. It's intended to support the implementation of the new CANMITS 2015 framework, and it contains extensive suggestions and sample content and tools for educators. Next slide, please. I do need to be some, uh, clear about some caveats, though, with this guide. Firstly, this is not intended to be a systematic review of this topic area. Second, these are general tools and tips, and if your context is different, you may need to adapt them to your setting. And then third, this is a practical guide. We've left the in-depth review of medical education theory and technique to others. So we'll pause here for some questions, and after that, Sue will walk you through the content and anatomy of the chapters to help you figure out where you can find the information you need. Next slide, please. So just as a reminder, your lines are muted, and if you have a question, please type it into the question box. So Anna, we just have one question right now. And um, they're, they're actually asking for um, the timing of the release of the tools guide at this stage. Um, I know we, you're planning to cover that later, but the question did come up, so I just thought I'd um, allow you to answer that now too, quickly. Sure. Cynthia, would you like to take that question? Sure. So um, there are actually some slides towards the end of this presentation where we address the question specifically, but um, we are planning to release the CanMeds Tools Guide at the ICRE, which occurs later in October um, in Vancouver. So immediately following that, um, people will be able to, to um, access the material in the Tools Guide. And I think that's it for now, Anna. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. So I'll hand over to Sue now, please. Will do. And uh, Sue GT here. Um, oh, let me go back. So uh, with apologies, there is a little bit of construction behind me, my building here. So if you feel I'm backing up in, in a, a dump truck, it's not me. It's just close by. So um, we're going to walk through over the next few minutes the anatomy of each chapter and uh, we've tried to be helpful in uh, this uh, resource uh, that each of the seven role specific chapters have a similar common what I call anatomy and I've outlined the anatomy here one to seven and then uh, the bullet. So uh, each, it rolls out, uh, it's written so that you can uh, Look and find the pieces that you need as you need it. You don't need to read it like a novel. You really can go to the section that you want and read it. So I'm just going to walk us through the different uh, sections up from one to seven and then the tools. And um, I see a very funny slide. So I'm going to... Not sure what's going on there, but I'll... I'll just roll with it. Um, we're going to use the Health Advocate uh, chapter to bring out some of the examples of, uh, of the different anatomy of the book in general. The approach that we used uh, will be the same for each of the roles. We're going to use Health Advocate. I chose Health Advocate because um, it's one where people say they've had some struggles teaching in the past. So the first part of each chapter is the why the role matters. And here we provide a high level overview of uh, what the value purpose of that role uh, and what it contributes uh, to the overall competence and what the impact or outcomes are. And while uh, uh, Anna says, you know, this is not the ultimate in evidence base, we've tried to ground our information and uh, and uh, details in the actual literature. For each of the roles, we're going to give you three or five talking points about why this role specifically matters. And for example, in health advocacy, uh, we remind ourselves that health advocacy happens all the time in patient care, and that that happens when clinically we're working with patients' health care preferences, needs, values. Um, we also talk about how health advocacy is a team endeavor. 
that it takes uh, more than physicians to really deliver on health advocacy and uh, provide some samples and examples of um, you know, some of the different uh, 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 collaborators that are going to be involved in health advocacy. And then the third thing we'll talk about in health advocacy, if you go to why the role matters, is that effective medical care really uh, requires the continuum of disease prevention, promotion, protection, and that uh, uh, we remind ourselves that the most sophisticated diagnostic test or therapeutic intervention uh, will have minimal impact if the living and working conditions of the patient uh, are not addressed. So we talk about the tensions in those sorts of things. Um, I'm gonna try to convince this to go to the next slide. Technical challenges here. Um, Sue, uh, if you yes? uh, if you're unable to uh, activate the slide deck, we can do it from our end. You'll just need to transfer it to us. Okay, I'll do that. Um, done. Apologies. I'm going to keep uh, just talking a little bit while the technology gets caught up with us, if that's okay. Anna, can you hear me? Yes, Sue, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Great. So, um, what the role looks like in daily practice. So, what we're going to talk about here in what a role looks like in daily practice is uh, what's unique about the role. And we offer a list of uh, trigger words uh, so that we help uh, people make connection between the role and their daily practice. Uh, you know, the sorts of trigger words that are appropriate and connected to health advocacy are things like uh, navigate, negotiate, recommend as support. Those are processes that are part of the action of health advocacy. Uh, when we're talking about the content of health advocacy, we uh, remind ourselves that the sorts of things, the sorts of content that we look at under health advocacy are barriers, competing interest, health behaviors, health literacy, poverty, prevention, risk factors. So. We have a variety of uh, trigger words uh, related to uh, the process and the content. The third part that you'll see in each of the um, uh, uh, roles is we give you some uh, information on preparing to teach the role. When we were putting that content together, uh, really we we decided that this is really uh, the, the, the information, the bare bones, either frameworks or uh, definitions that were going to be necessary for faculty and for learners to get a handle on. And so here we uh, deal with common misconceptions and uh, we really help clarify some of the new things that are related to CANMEDS 2015 and some of the important topics, including frameworks and models. The fourth part of the uh, 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 each chapter are the hints and tips and tools for teaching the role. Here, we present practical tips on how to teach each role. And, uh, you know, what we've done is, you know, what are the, you know, we could give you a long, long list and we decided, no, let's focus on a small handful of tools that are related to uh, each of the roles. And, I, you know, in Health Advocate, we've given you six but I'm gonna just share with you uh, two of my favorites. 
uh, for health advocate. One of the teaching tips in health advocate relates to providing explicit orientation information and resources about the most frequent health advocacy needs. And so we talk about the importance of teaching uh, for any given rotation or location or population, what are the health advocacies? And as a rheumatologist, and she works in one setting with one group of patients, when, when a resident goes to her, she, it would be good for her to orient um, her learners to at that location with those patients, who is the most important uh, uh, social worker to help with funding, or what is the best online resources to help. Uh, uh, that's probably different than in Quebec, than in uh, Halifax than in northern BC. So really on the ground practical orientation. Um, so that that's one of our teaching tips. The second is, uh, uh, the second one that I'm going to highlight is actually tip number four and that is uh, the importance that when we're working with people that we do a little bit more talking aloud. Um, sometimes people call that signposting so that um, when you're having, uh, when you're going to be meeting with a patient, you just spend a little bit of time either orienting the patient to what you're going to be doing, or after you meet with that patient, you'll say, you might have noticed that I made sure they left with the instruction sheets or the phone number, because really that's important as it relates to the, you know, me working with this patient in their health advocacy. One of the uh, features of all the teaching tips is that there's a role summary. Uh, I call it a cheat sheet and uh, uh, didn't actually use those words in the book, but it really is a two-page cheat sheet on all of the important content for faculty and all of the important content uh, uh, for learners. I don't want to minimize that you can actually summarize all of the important content into two pages, but we've tried to at least you know, put some flashing lights around the important information uh, for starting off by putting together uh, a two-page summary sheet for each of the seven roles. Next slide. So the next slide is number five, and that's about um, how we're, we're uh, going to assess the role. Uh, we provide specific hints and tips, again, focusing on uh, those high yield activities or tools related to a specific role. And each of the author teams for the seven roles uh, thought very strategically and purposefully and tried to give you the hints and tips um, that they felt were going to benefit uh, um, most people most of the time. Uh, the, uh, in Health Advocate, uh, my example is, you know, there we have three uh, hints for assessment. Um, the one that I want to highlight for you is assessment tip one, which talks about the value of using the feedback and assessment of uh, team members, other healthcare professionals, uh, to provide uh, input on your resident's performance. Um, often that's done through a multi-source feedback tool. So uh, it's often the people that are part of the team that are sharing the health advocacy of patients uh, that can provide uh, important focused uh, feedback. So that's one of our hints as it relates to health advocate. Next slide. The next two sections of each of the chapters is suggested resources and other resources. So the other resources, number seven, is really quite a, a long list. I'm talking here, you know, 10 or 12 favorite articles, books, or websites that the, that the authors for each role have suggested. But I think even more importantly is number six. Uh, we worked really hard to have them choose a handful, very small number, three or five uh, resources that if you wanted to know more about communicator, collaborator, uh, leader, um, what's the advice of the authors who wrote the tool, that tools guide chapter? And, uh, you know, one of the things that um, 
uh, we've been able to do is include links to some really sample, uh, important sample videos that relate to the CanMeds 2015 content um, that uh, themselves make really important uh, accessible teaching and learning resources. Next slide. So the next part is really, uh, I would say, you know, one of the most exciting parts of the actual tools guide, and notwithstanding the fact that uh, there's a rich, important information in uh, the um, content for each role, we've actually prepared sample teaching tools and sample assessment tools for each role. There are uh, over uh, 50 uh, teaching tools um, from a low of six to a high of nine uh, for the different roles. And we have anywhere from two to five assessment tools. And uh, so these tools are ready to go. Uh, you can, of course, customize them for your own context. Um, and you can combine, let's say you were going to do um, multi-source feedback for a couple of roles you're going to look at the multi-source feedback in the different roles, combine them. They are both exemplars that you can build on and extrapolate, or you can put on a photocopier and print them tomorrow. I want to turn the next slide. And I think this is where I go back to Cynthia. And Cynthia, you can... Uh, maybe get us caught up on the reality of how we're going to um, have this book um, and these tools electronically. Sure, thanks Sue. Um, so as Sue mentioned, uh, we did create these tools with the view that um, they'd be uh, consumed by some people who would choose just to photocopy the tools and use them directly um, as they've been prepared. But we also envision that some of you uh, may well want to combine tools together um, and make some customizations to your context. So what we've, uh, we're working on now is preparing electronic versions of the tools that people can modify. So we're trying to strip out um, the content and put it into a format that um, anyone can open and modify without the headaches of um, lots of over formatting in the document. So we're going in right now and preparing uh, PowerPoint slides that you guys could easily add another slide into or take slides out. Um, we're also preparing Word versions of documents that um, will allow you to, to go in and make that customization. And our plan is to have that content available on um, a new platform that we're uh, releasing uh, in time for the ICRE or, or shortly after. Um, the, the, the tools will be available and um, many of them will be posted uh, for your use at that time or sh shortly thereafter. And, uh, and so if you visit, if you're at the ICRE, you'll, you'll have a demo of that new platform. And if not, um, if you go to the CanMeds website in, uh, shortly after the ICRE, you'll be able to um, access and, and peruse those electronic tools. And next slide. Okay, so um, now we're just going to go to the questions that people had submitted. And um, Sue, uh, one of these questions I think uh, would be good for you to answer, and it's, um, does this content in the new tools guide, does it cover uh, the new competencies that um, have been introduced in the CanMeds 2015 um, framework? The short answer to that is yes. Um, uh, you know, uh, First off, leader is different than manager, and so there are some additional competencies related to uh, that transformation, uh, including, you know, some particular um, uh, competencies around self-awareness and self-monitoring. Um, professional identity is more emphasized in CAMEDS 2015, handover and collaborator. Um, those are top of mind, just off the very top of my head, things that I know are new in CANMEDS 2015, additional work on quality improvement and patient safety. And so besides on the content side, making sure that we um, clarified some of the details or resources, um, we did in fact uh, put together some 
of the specific uh, teaching tools and assessment tools um, that relate to the, those content areas within those specific roles. Okay, thanks, Sue. Um, there's one other question here, um, and it's um, from an individual who said they're a new program director, and they've found that um, difficult to convince some of their residents um, that, uh, and they've used the example in this case of health advocacy, to, to convince people that it's important and um, relevant to their daily activity. Can you um, tell, tell us how this tools guide addresses that issue? Yeah, uh, well, I would say that one of the things that CAMIS 2015 does is it refocuses um, and emphasizes that health advocacy is part of daily practice. And I think what happens in daily practice is uh, when, we're, when people are practicing well, um, they slide very seamlessly from medical expert uh, to uh, managing resources, which is leader, uh, to health advocacy. Um, but, you know, when they're filling out a form for drug benefits for their patients funding for cancer or arthritis or writing a note to um, a colleague uh, around uh, making sure that people have access to the sorts of care in a timely way that without the effort of the person on the phone or in writing would do, that's health advocacy. So I think, I think the real issue I would push back is not only a resident issue, it's a faculty issue because remember I talked about signposting. We're not pointing to, you know, this is really health advocacy and I know it feels like we're in the middle a medical expert, when, but when I phone my colleague and say, this is why this person uh, needs this um, um, intervention or um, this uh, activity, um, then, you know, um, then we need to take responsibility for that. And I think also in the conversations um, that we have with patients where we say, you know, are there any barriers to you doing what we've outlined is important for your care? That's health advocacy. That's really making sure that any of the barriers, uh, be they personal or financial or structural, are part of the conversation of day-to-day -day practice. Um, I'm also going to toss this to Anna to see, Anna, you know, I don't live a clinician's life. Um, I work with clinicians and help them decode can meds and make it come to life. Um, but I'm just going to toss it to you to see if there's other important things that you think need to be added. I, <clears throat> pardon me, I totally agree with what you said, Sue, and I think it is a really big um, signposting issue because we do this without really even thinking. When I ask a resident to call for an MRI rather than faxing the form, I'm trying to indicate them to them that there's a different level of advocacy needed here that the urgency needs to be conveyed. And I think um, for, for junior learners, it's hard for them to get their heads around activities that that represent these roles. So we hope that those trigger words will help them identify, you know, if I'm saying um, to, to, for example, prioritize or negotiate uh, with uh, intervention service, with uh, investigation service, then then that's happening immediately. So I think it's important to look at your context and try and, and inventory when this happens and then take the next step to signpost and label it for your, for your trainees. So that we actually have quite a few questions coming in now. Um, I'm not sure we'll get to all of them at this point. Uh, I may just ask to do um, two more and then we'll uh, move on. And uh, I think, Sue, you may have mentioned this earlier, but um, for those of you who are, um, I did put in a question, if we don't get around to answering it uh, today during the session, we will follow up with answers to all of the questions um, post, post webinar. Um, the other question that came in that I can answer, answer quite quickly is someone's asked whether there are specific resources for patient safety and quality improvement. 
And um, so I'll just take this one. Um, yes, there are specific. Um, that's definitely a new theme that's become quite prominent in CanMeds 2015. And so um, across actually several of the roles, we've introduced uh, tools and uh, strategies to help teach uh, patient safety and quality improvement. So I can answer that one quickly. And then there's, um, there's a bit of a theme here um, coming up about um, CanMed's uh, the tools guide um, and the eventual plan and its connection to CBD more broadly. Um, the, the theme I'm picking up here um, is how um, we're going to integrate uh, CanMed's 2015, this, this tools guide where it's still structured role by role um, and, and the broader plan for CBD including um, EPAs and how that's really uh, marrying many roles together at once. So, um, Sue, I, I think if you could speak to that, I think it's this idea of how do you link all of the, the roles together um, in that broader CBD plan. Right. So, um, you know, let me just start with, you know, uh, perfection is the enemy of the good. So this CAMEDS Tools Guide is the starting point, not the ending point. Um, and uh, what we want to do in time for CAMEDS 2015 is to release role-specific information and resources. Um, what we will talk about um, a little bit later in the webinar, but I'll highlight here, is we are not saying you could or should teach roles individually. Um, all the time, or sometimes as some programs will elect not to do that, um, or rarely do that. I, I do think that uh, just uh, like any topic, people do need to understand and be oriented to the language. So I think both uh, residents and faculty will benefit from understanding that. But when it goes, when it comes to teaching, um, uh, CanMeds in the workplace, and per, for sure assessing at CanMeds 2015 in the workplace, uh, we highly encourage and advocate for uh, every activity to have two or three roles, not uh, role-specific tools. It is how we presented it, uh, really just from a simplicity perspective. Uh, we do um, and are uh, talking about, uh, you know, where is the next generation of resources that help uh, faculty put these things together and we will talk a little bit about that um, on this webinar but really uh, we understand uh, that that's both an interest and a need. The CBD CBME um, issue is a, is really a timing and, and, and process issue. There are two specialties as you, many of you are aware that are currently working on their competency by design activities and they're aiming for July 1st 2016 for implementation and then there's a, a gradual cohort and that um, implementation strategy really focuses on entrustable professional activities and real-time work activities that um, take up a, a variety of roles and, uh, you know, paying attention to different roles in different ways. Um, that's really something that I think many educators have been doing for the last while and, and those that aren't yet in the CBD uh, 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 um, process at this point uh, will be encouraged to, uh, you know, roll out and implement those tools that work and make sense for their local environments. And so if, for example, you decide that one of the things that your trainees all need to be really good at is to run a family meeting, and you decide there are three roles related to running a family meeting, um, then uh, you, know, you will pick and choose and combine uh, the aspects of interest, and you could use, in fact, the tools in the tools guide to uh, uh, put together the criteria of interest from the samples from the three specific roles. Because sometimes you might be focusing on communicator, collaborator, and leader. And, uh, and another time you're gonna be, you, another program might be focusing on collaborator, uh, professional, and medical expert. There isn't really a right or wrong. It's really about 
how you decide you're going to teach and assess. So I think um, it really is important to have these conversations to clarify the difference between competency by design, which is a structured, timed uh, process. Those of us that are not yet in the competency by design will implement CAMEDS 2015 in a way that uh, you know anticipates competency by design and meets the needs of our programs and accreditation. Thank you, Sue. I think we, um, just in the interest of time, should move on to the next slide, and uh, we can. I'll, I'll hold these questions. So if uh, we do have time at the end, we can come back to the ones that weren't uh, weren't addressed just now. So samples, 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 and uh, I'll build on uh, the sort of themes and questions, but. Um, we're providing tools for teaching and assessment, not because we don't think that you can develop your own. There are an abundance of really good teaching tools and assessment tools out there. And, you know, when you look at these, you go, hey, you know, mine are better. I say terrific. Use yours. Just, you know, want to make sure the content is the right content. And, you know, most of Canvas hasn't changed, so a lot of your tools uh, will, that you're using uh, might take minor tweaks. But don't, you know, if you have good stuff, please, you know, uh, refine um, and update. Don't, uh, you know, think you have to use these. These are available for your use but not required. Um, next slide. So, um, you know, this is a bit like Anna's caveat because, uh, I'm presuming that uh, when you're, uh, have teaching tools and assessment tools, uh, you need to imagine what's going to be suitable for your program, your faculty, your residents. Um, incremental uh, innovation uh, is often easier uh, and more palatable to your program, so you need to decide, you know, where your next gain is and what, what your next incremental improvement is. So you want to make sure you're choosing the right tools. And to, this is that combining roles and tools in an effective and efficient manner. And, uh, you know, if we had infinite time and money, we could have prepared a thousand page document for you. Um, but as it is, this is this is long and a bit complicated. So um, we, we stopped in time to make sure you had it. Next slide. Now. I'm going to, uh, remember I said that I'm highlighting uh, from Health Advocate. And for those of you that uh, use uh, Google Maps or a similar online map um, uh, model, uh, you know, the anatomy is really the satellite view, right? It's the where are the roads and what connects to what. And so there are, there is a sort of a constant anatomy um, and I've tried to, in the examples, uh, uh, give you some anticipation of what you might see uh, when you get into uh, this resource. I'm going to just show you very, in a very practical, granular way, a couple of the teaching tools. Um, this is a teaching tool six for health advocacy, and it's about preparing a case report. And uh, here uh, you can see that there are uh, some um, very specific instructions for the learner. And um, I think the next slide has uh, the second page, which would presumably be the back page of um, the case report or depending on you know, what you do. As teachers, you have lots of choices. Do you, uh, you know, decide you're going to um, have a case report like this and um, tell people when they start a three-month uh, core rotation that you want a sample case report monthly, or is this something that you want them to do and then report back to you because you're just doing one-on-one -on -one teaching, or is this something that uh, for health advocacy uh, you want to take a more active uh, uh, role and uh, you know work on it in pairs um, again, there are plenty of options, but what we've tried to do is create some sample questions that if you're going to give case report as homework or assignment or something for a portfolio or something to report on at uh, midday rounds, um, you know, what are the sorts of questions that um, will help 
the learner and the faculty know they're in the wheelhouse of health advocacy. So here's a sample teaching tool. Next slide. So here is um, the front page of the summary sheet, what I described as a cheat sheet for health advocacy. All right, so um, we've given you some bullets about what it is. There's those trigger words. We give you hints. We give you the key steps. Um, because if you're trying to evaluate someone's health advocacy, uh, you know, we need to know what the criteria are. And so we've uh, uh, identified what the key steps are. And, uh, you know, when I say we, I mean the authors who are working on the content. Um, I'm not an expert in health advocacy, but my job as the editor was to work with them, help them organize it in a way that you could use it. Next slide. This is a sample assessment tool. Remember I talked about how multi-source feedback. Um, and here's uh, five criteria uh, that uh, you could uh, either ask your faculty or I, uh, our tip is to, to ask um, the other health professionals who are working with the resident. Um, you know, can you fill this form out uh, as it relates to this uh, resident, uh, you know, either um, this many or this time or this way, um, uh, if it's a, you know, you'll know your context about who are the right people and what's the right frequency and how to gather this information up. But here's a very short, focused, multi-source feedback on health advocacy. Um, these criteria are short. Uh, the number of them are, are short. They're five. And so if you decided you were going to assess multiple roles using multi-source feedback, um, which I think is a wise idea so you don't have assessment fatigue from your colleagues, then you may choose some of these five or all of these five and three from another role, etc. Next slide. So we've tried to be both uh, helpful. Um, our bias has been to provide you teaching tools and assessment tools which can happen in the workplace. Um, that said, there are also some of the more structured assessment tools. Um, here's a scenario for uh, health advocacy. Um, that's not to say that uh, uh, when you put it together that you, you decide you don't also want to assess communication skills, so you would choose communication criteria, which are also in, uh, in the tools guide for OSCEs, um, or medical expert. Um, always important to make sure that you know, people are making progress in their medical expertise. So here uh, we've just identified a couple of criteria. Um, I think in the actual tools guide, there's a, a variety, maybe six or seven different criteria um, that relate uh, to health advocacy, which we've mixed and matched for the different sample scenarios that we've provided for you. Again, they're just to brain, brainstorm for you. Questions? Over to you, I think, Cynthia. Thanks, Fu. We're just pulling up the questions um, that we have here. So um, this one actually cycles back uh, to what we were discussing earlier about the platform that we'll be using for the uh, tools, the electronic resources. Um, and the person pointed out that not everyone uses an iPhone. Uh, so, Sue, I think I'll just take this question if that's um, okay by you. So um, sure. it's... Uh, um, what we've designed for our new platform is, um, and forgive me, I'm not an IT specialist, but it's a, it's a, it's a website, it's a mobile friendly website, so it really should fit to, if you're looking at it on your um, handheld device, it should um, uh, fit to your screen um, and make it so that you can use it um, on your phone in the, in the clinic if you chose, but it's also um, set up so that you can use it on your um, tablet or website or sorry your computer all of those things so we try to anticipate the fact that you're correct not everyone does use um, does use a, an iPhone and, and we try to accommodate that so uh, the the much of the content is available that way but you will be able to download it um, to your own uh, device in um, often in um, 
in either a PDF or um, some sort of um, rich text format. Um, so, uh, so uh, any um, then there's a question here about will these tools be um, um, Cynthia, I missed that question. I missed that question. Uh, the other question was, will the these tools, was, particularly these tools, the assessment tools, tools be linked to the portfolios being developed by the Royal College for programs to upload residence evaluations? I'll answer that. I'll answer that. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you know, I think there are ongoing discussions around e-portfolio. Echo, I'm sorry. Echo, I'm sorry. So, so the tools, the tools each, of the each of the specialties are selecting, are selecting the competency by design will be used across the country and how and where those fit in e-portfolio are currently being sorted out as they roll out the first two groups. So I think it's a good question. I think you want to keep asking it. I think it, it will be most relevant, um, you know, whether that happens for the first uh, wave or the second wave. But uh, um, I, there's a commitment that uh, across the country, as CBD rolls out, uh, the tools are consistent across specialties. How many of the CanMed's 2015 sample tools, which we provided to you, are used by specialties as a starting off point. Um, you know, I think time will tell. I think there's lots of good stuff that they can use and build on. Um, and uh, for now, for the 90 plus percent who are not yet in CBD, there are ready to use tools as we're implementing CAMEDS 2015. Cynthia, should we go to the rest of the slides? Sure. Sorry, Sue. We're having a bit of um, issue. Technology is not our friend today. We'll go ahead. So, Anna, over to you. Anna, over to you. Thank you. So I'll, I'll just move uh, quickly through these slides as we have addressed many of the points. Um, as has been mentioned, it's important to consider your assessments as tiny biopsies of your learner's progress towards competence. So to get an accurate picture, you need to sample the performance in multiple settings using different assessors, different tools, and over time through residency. Next slide, please. And this we've also covered as well. It's overwhelming to assess all seven CanMed's role in, roles in every assessment activity. So, you know, focusing on two or three roles in a given case, activity, task, or rotation can be more manageable. Next slide, please. This is something I do want to highlight. So f feedback and coaching are becoming central uh, to helping our residents progress over time. And we need to keep in mind that assessment can be very powerful um, when not only we assess learning, but we use assessment as a tool for learning to guide our learners' um, attention and as a tool for learning. Next slide, please. And I'll pass over to Cynthia for this. Thanks, Anna. So we have... Yeah. So we have we have um, mentioned this previously, but our plan is to release the uh, tools guide at the ICRE, um, the International Conference in Residency Education, which is going to be in October at um, in Vancouver. So both um, the tools guide, um, as well as a couple of other resources. Obviously, um, the CanMed's 2015 Physician Competency Framework will be released at that time. And we're also um, releasing the CanMeds milestones in an online um, platform that I did mention. This is, will be the same platform where you can go and access the uh, teaching and assessment tools from the tools guide. 
Um, so we've just put up a slide here um, indicating the dates of the um, conference in, in uh, Vancouver. And um, next slide, please. So um, for those of, um, some of you may well actually be going to the ICRE, for those of you who are there, um, you can pick up the uh, tools guide as well as um, the CanMeds 2015 framework at the CanMeds booth um, at the conference center. Um, for those of you who uh, won't be able to uh, join us in um, in Vancouver for the ICRE, we will be making the uh, tools guide available um, for purchase on our CanMed store. Um, and we've uh, got an address there and it will also be available uh, on Amazon. So you can uh, down, uh, get a sort of print on demand uh, version of the document at that time. Um, for those of you who um, would just like to access the tools, those will be freely available um, on the, uh, the online platform, which we refer to as CanMeds Interactive. Um, again, that um, URL will be available um, after the ICRE, and, um, and you can go to the, just the Royal College's website to get access to that. So um, the tools will be available to anyone, and even some of the teaching tips that Sue's um, described to you um, and, and some of those other features, we are trying to incorporate that into CanMeds Interactive, and um, that, that platform will evolve over time uh, as well, and we'll have more and more content. And all of the, the um, goal behind all of these resources is really to support um, the busy program directors, the busy faculty who um, are uh, find it difficult to um, to integrate the CanMeds into their their programs and are are looking for support. So this is our attempt at at providing that support to you. So next slide, and we actually have a bit more time for uh, questions. So. Um, I think I'll quickly take um, maybe a couple more minutes just to, to put some out here. Um, there's a question here about the tools seem very time consuming for rotations where there's a high turnover in supervising staff and where the number of hours devoted to clinical care and resident hours are in conflict with one another. Could you please speak to how easy it'll be to use these tools? Um, so Sue, would you um, like to speak Sue, to that? Would you like to speak to that? Absolutely. Love to. So it is specifically because um, faculty and residents, uh, you know, are juggling competing interests that our assessment tools and our teaching tools are um, focused uh, on what can and should you be doing um, in the workplace. So the, the tips aren't about how to run a workshop. It's how to shoehorn um, the sorts of questions that you ask people um, at, as you're teaching them and working with them, um, be that in the OR, in anesthesia, in a busy clinic, um, in the community. Um, you know, what are the one or two questions? And, you know, we haven't been as helpful as I think we might have been, and that's why we were really focused on doing it for CAMEDS 2015. Um, you know, if you decide the case report is too much like a homework activity, then it could be that what you do um, with your faculty is identify sort of what is the one or two questions that when we're reviewing this case and planning uh, their surgery, their anesthesia, their next visit, um, what's the one or two questions that we can and should ask to uh, push people along the notion of understanding and making sure that we know what they know about a different about And I, I don't know if I would like to, i just jump in and say, this tool guide is meant really to provide you with a menu, and we've had requests for more formal tools like uh, formal OSCE stations. We've had requests for on-the-fly tips and tools, and so we're trying to provide a breadth of examples, some of which would be um, a separate formal activity, some of which, as, as Sue has said, could easily be shoehorned into regular um, 
uh, workplace learning. And so the idea is with this menu that you not use all of it, but pick and choose what fits your setting. So, so if your setting is um, having rapid turnover and there's a, there's a limited time available, I would advise that you look at the tools that are, that are more geared towards that type of a setting. Are there other questions? I note that we're quite close to the end of our time. I don't know if I should um, just quickly uh, thank everybody um, and then we can uh, answer some further questions offline. Cynthia, would you like me to go ahead? Well, perhaps we will go ahead just in the interest of time. So I, I do want to just end by thanking the many, many, many authors who really made this a priority in the last um, nine months or so. There was a lot of work that went into this guide, and I want to thank all those people who contributed. I want to thank my colleagues who are listed from the CanMed's office for their dedication. Um, next slide, please. I want to direct you just to some um, resources you can see on the screen. Um, where you can get more information. And then finally, I want just to let you know that you will receive a short survey. Um, we are very interested in your feedback. Uh, we're keen to make both um, the tool guide and our explanation of it um, more clear and better for you. So please let us know. Uh, what you think about the webinar and what you've heard about the tool guide. You do, um, you are eligible for MOC credits uh, as part of uh, participating in this webinar. And the webinar is um, recorded and, and will be available in a few weeks. So thank you everybody very much.